This is a video demo showing how to palpate the carpal bones in hand. The demo is on right hand. There are eight carpal bones in hand. We are going to locate the proximal row of carpals from lateral to medial. First, locate the styloid processes of radius and ulna and slide your finger just distal. Your fingers sink into the soft tissue at wrist joint now. That's where the proximal row of carpals are located. Now, let's palpate the scaphoid and its tubercle. The scaphoid is the most lateral one in the proximal row of carpals. Move your fingers distally along the shaft of radius. After passing styloid process on radius, just distal from it, there is the scaphoid. It is located in the anatomical snuff box. Hold the position of your finger once you find it and have the patient's wrist ulnar deviation. You can feel that the scaphoid bulges into your finger and sinks down with radial deviation. From the lateral side of the scaphoid, move about 1.5 to 1 cm anteriorly. You can find its tubercle on the palmar side of scaphoid along the flexor crease. Now locate the Lister's tubercle and move distally and slightly toward ulna. The lunate is along the same line of middle finger. Move the patient's wrist into flexion and extension and feel for the lunate pressing up into your finger in flexion and disappearing in extension. Pisiform sits on top of the triquetrum in the proximal row of carpals. Find the flexor crease and move along the crease toward ulna. Roll your finger in small circles to feel the pisiform. Triquetrum is posterior to pisiform and just distal to the ulnar styloid process. After locating the ulnar styloid process, slide distally onto the tissue and stay there. Have your patient's wrist radially deviated. You can feel the triquetrum bulges to the side. Now we are going to locate the distal row of carpals from lateral to medial. First locate the first metacarpal bone and palpate along the shaft proximally and feel for the saddle joint of thumb. Trapezium is just proximal from it. To confirm that you are on trapezium, not on the base of the first metacarpal bone, ask your patient to move their thumb in flexion and extension actively. If your fingers feel the movement of the first metacarpal bone clearly, you are on the metacarpal bone, not trapezium. Check again to make sure you are palpating between the base of the first metacarpal bone and scaphoid. The tubercle of trapezium can be located on the anterior aspect of it. Once you locate the trapezium and slide onto the palmar side of it to feel for the tubercle. Often, the tubercle of trapezium are so close to the tubercle of scaphoid. That makes us hard to distinguish them individually. Trapezoid is directly next to trapezium and proximal to the base of the second metacarpal bone. Palpate along the shaft of the second metacarpal bone, and locate the base of the bone. Drop off it proximally, then you are on the trapezoid. Ask your patient to flex their wrist and deviate toward ulnar side, then you can feel the trapezoid press up into your finger. Capitate is distal to the lunate and proximal to the base of the third metacarpal bone. Locate the Lister's tubercle and move distally into ulnar side a bit to locate the lunate. Move a bit distally then you are on the capitate. Flex and extend wrist to feel the capitate rolling under your finger. To locate the hamate, you need to locate the pisiform first. And then put your first interphalangeal joint on pisiform and then flex the joint toward the base of index finger. You can feel the hook of hamate underneath of thumb pad. Your patient may feel tender to palpation. After locating the hook of hamate, palpate its medial and dorsal side. This is it for the palpation of the bony landmarks on hand. Thank you for watching.